Hello everyone, welcome back to GGN. This is part three for this news report today, Wednesday, October 24th, 2012. My website is ggnonline.com, that's ggnonline.com. On YouTube, my channels are ddarko2012 and ddarko2013. I'm going to try to figure something out as far as people being able to find the different parts, part two, part three. I've had two people mention that in the past week for some reason. Uh, but like I said before, if you just go to my channel there, um, you'll find every upload in the order they were uploaded. It only takes like 30 seconds along with my website, and the website's right down in YouTube's video description. So I only say that because, you know, when I put so much time in these videos, I mean, every little thing counts. So I mean, you got to remember that's 15 videos plus two counts on YouTube. That's 30 times I got to do that. And it takes time to make all those links after doing all those links that I already do. So. You know, just, uh, I'll try to do what I can to put, like, maybe a link in the YouTube's video description, right? U.S. may soon become world's top oil producer. So I just covered this before, and um, recently I've been covering, too, about gold. Um, the most richest, the richest people are buying gold right now in Russia. They're uh, buying a bunch of gold. Um, Libya had some decent amount of reserves of gold before their uh, country was ransacked. Um, two things also, um, there's been uh, these tungsten gold bars being uh, floated around uh, in Manhattan, New York, uh, in Australia, in Perth, there's uh, fake gold going around. And recently I covered a story that I don't think got any coverage, which was an Iranian scientist uh, basically saying or making the claim that they're able to create gold. So. Uh, with that being said, sales by U.S. Mint of Silver outpace gold over 50-fold from October 24th. Figures released by the U.S. Mint on Friday indicate that sales of silver in year-to-date exceed those of gold more than 50-fold in terms of weight. Silver Doctor says that the feverish sales pace for silver is unsustainable as the current mine ratio for silver to gold is 9 to 1. And if that price of silver per ounce rises above $50, the U.S. Mint will be unable to keep pace with the investment demand. I don't, I don't really understand that, that last part of that statement right there. I mean, wouldn't they just, um, wouldn't they just uh, you know, basically put it the price higher? Wouldn't it be like $100 or $200 or $500 if they have less? I don't know. I, 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 you know, I don't even really try to figure out all this stuff anymore. You know, it's like this with these uh, treasury bonds that the Fed buys and people say, oh, we're going to have hyperinflation and it's just the wheels are going to come off. And, you know, it's like, honestly, I don't think they are. I think these uh, this, uh, these uh, cartels of cent private central banks and the people that run them, they know, they know exactly what they're doing and it, it, uh, they know how to manipulate it uh, so that they can keep it uh, propped up uh, for as long as they want. Uh, Bernanke set to unveil a number larger than eternity. So Zero Hedge is saying that's what Ben Shalom is preparing for after historic changes last month. The Federal Reserve officials this week will discuss a possible expansion of the size of its third round of bond buying and better ways to guide markets about future policy actions. Just because $40 billion per month and a new flow is apparently not enough and because the market is now well below the level it was when QE3 was announced. And it goes on and it says that, in other words, instead of ending <clears throat> this operation twist, which it can't as this incremental $45 billion in long end flow added to the market each month, the Fed will merely roll it into an unsterilized program that will expand the Fed's balance sheet not by 40 but by $85 billion per month. And you have Fed bond purchases have not translated into jobs but higher food and gasoline prices. So it says here that uh, Ben Bernanke plans to keep buying Treasury bonds bombs <laughs> an agency mortgage-backed securities until employment improves substantially. That promise may force him to keep buying bonds until the final months of his terms or term ending in January 2014. Th 37 facts about how cruel this economy has been to millions of desperate American families. You can go there and check it out. I'll go through a couple of them. So over the past decade, things have steadily gotten worse for American families no matter what our politicians have tried. Poverty and government dependence continues to rise and the cost of living continues to go up as incomes continue to go down. It is truly frightening to think about what the country is going to look like if current trends continue. Number one, the recent survey discovered that 40% of all Americans have 500 bucks or less in savings. 
Also, 28% of all Americans do not have a single penny saved for emergencies, along with 10 million households don't have a single bank account. Also, family homelessness in Washington, D.C., one of the wealthiest regions in the entire country, has risen 23% since the last recession began. The number of Americans living in poverty has increased by about 6 million over the past four years, and medium household income has fallen four years in a row. Overall, has declined by more than $4,000 over the past four years, and 60% of middle-class Americans say that they have had to reduce household spending over the past year. 85% of middle-class Americans say it's more difficult to maintain their standard of living uh, that they had 10 years ago. In the U.S., 77% of all Americans are living to paycheck to paycheck at least some of the time. And I'll finish up with number 10. In the U.S., more than 41% of all working-age Americans are not working. Then from the 24th, today from RT, world is becoming more leftist, says Russian Communist Party chief. So the leader of the Communist Party has predicted the rise of the leftist ideologies across the world and in Russia warning that if the country's leadership continues to only imitate political changes, it may be overthrown. Undoubtedly, we'll see a turn to the left and movement towards a fair society. It's a world trend that will affect Russia as well. So pretty interesting, though. Um, it says globalization based on speculative finance resulted in the current recession and Eurozone crisis. I, I saw another article that was actually saying that the whole Eurozone crisis was was a way to prop up the petrol dollar and keep it alive. And when I heard that, I'm like, oh, okay, that actually makes kind of sense. Uh, because then what and what is the euro what does the eu get well what did they what, what did i just cover yesterday with um nigel farage of england that the eu has become a dictatorship you know and uh it's all about consolidation of power they thought they were going to have a federation uh union of states right uh instead they're going to have uh, a totalitarian european union it's just a good way to kind of step back and look at the bigger picture about how when things happen, these, quote, crises, see, a circus, that's what they should call it, crisis, they, a typo, uh, is that what? They always get what they want, these global elites. He says it's a world trend that will affect Russia as well. I also found it interesting that um, a poll that was done in, uh, by, you know, for Russians, for the Russian people, so that fewer of them like Americans. Uh, but what they also said was that um, they have pretty strong support for the EU, even though it dropped like four percentage points. Uh, but I still thought it was kind of interesting that they uh, that they liked the EU more than that. Well, it makes sense, right? It says you thought the whole EU SSR thing was over the top. Have a look at this poster. Pretty interesting. We can share the same star, Europe for all. So there you go. It says take a look at this promotional poster. Notice anything? Alongside the symbols of Christianity, Judaism, uh, and so on, one of the wickedest emblems of humanity is ever conceived, the hammer and sickle. But I do kind of find it interesting. I want to make this point, uh, throw it out there, is, uh, you know, part of World War II was experimenting with types of systems, uh, but not just experimenting with them as far as which one was better, as far as, you know, if you, you, know, you can call it different things are really all the same when it comes down to it. Um, government... Uh, command or controlled economies and stuff like that but communism fascism democracy and what they wanted to do eventually was to merge them all together so you know with with and then come up with like this kind of uniform universal form of communism for the people and uh, kind of a fascism at the top for the elites and so that's what you're seeing now in russia so you had uh, in, in the united states it's kind of weird how we're turning into kind of like this more uh, uh communist type uh, system and then here in Russia, they've become more private, and they have this huge elite and stuff like that. They're going back to the censoring. But they seem to have more of a capitalist-type uh, government, or um, economy, I'm sorry, uh, also in China as well, right? So I, kind of, I find it interesting that in the United States, uh, these Walmarts are really, they kind of are like these the thread that's holding civilization together you know as, as far as being civil not uh, uh, you know stealing and, and going ape shit over each other uh, once the grid the plug for the grid gets pulled uh, it's almost like these walmarts are are like a uh, military strategic um uh, institutions or infrastructure that keep everything going when the when the sh when the crap does hit the fan you'll see a barbed wire go up uh, the fema camps may actually be in walmart parking lots 
Uh, look at how the structure is built. Um, they have everything there. It's huge inside, which can be a fusion center. Uh, but my point is, is that all these it, the people in America are able to maintain their standard of living because of cheap crap products from out east that are made with slave labor. Now, the the irony is that the U.S. and Americans are trying to make up for this for this loss of uh, revenue, their or their income, their savings uh, by by buying cheap products and maintain their standard of living that they used to have. Whereas in China, these people are slaving away to make these cheap products so that they can maintain the American way of life. Isn't that kind of funny that we're both slaving away for this? But in Russia, you have an elite. Uh, in Japan, you have your own little elite, all these mafia and bloodline families. Um, you know you have them in China. Um, you have them in the UK. You have them in the EU. You have them in the United States. And they live a completely separate life. That's what I talk about, two different systems. 11 EU nations get the go-ahead on Robin Hood financial tax. So they launched a hotly contested Robin Hood financial transaction tax tax that is tipped to raise billions for the public purse. See, it's for you. It's for the public. Yeah, it says uh, that, and I applaud this, said the European Union's taxation commissioner. So I'm sure she does. Um, it has great benefits to offer. So, you know, after seeing uh, that, I'm sure you can imagine what the benefits are going to be. Uh, 3,000 doctors putting patients on death lists that single them out to be allowed to die. So we already know about this, right? Uh, it's called eugenics. They're killing all the useless eaters. Then next up, we have Department of Defense Population Control, part of U.S. Stability Operations. A Defense Department official admitted yesterday that population control is an integral part of America's stability operations. So Deputy Assistant Secretary of Defense told an audience a few days ago that population control is one of the core missions of the U.S. military in relation to stability operations. He says, while we're seeking to rebalance towards the Asia-Pacific region, again, this is the same thing I was talking about. This is the balancing out. This is why Americans are training Chinese to replace them. While at the same time, you see these BS articles from Bloomberg saying, well, you know, Americans, they just lack the skills. Oh, yeah? Well, then why are their jobs being shipped overseas and they're training the replacements because they don't have the skills in China? Because, you know, the Kissingers, the Nixons, all of these people working in the shadows uh, handed China your economy. Strange domes to line the Texas coast in preparation for something to come. FEMA funding impenetrable dome structures around Houston. So remember, Wal remember Walmart's uh, military institutions, FEMA camps as well. Everybody th wants to think that they're going to be a big sign saying FEMA camp. Uh, we know that these super domes, sports stadiums, are going to be used for them as well. What's interesting is that they're act they're actually adding extra security and fencing measures that have been implemented around the structure site for the domes. So, yeah, talking about reinforcing the structure with iron and concrete until it's a fortress that not even the U.S. Air Force could destroy. FEMA plans to build about 35 of these shelters along the Texas coast. Then we have Army to assign reserve units to NORTHCOM, says U.S. Army and plans to increase its integration of active duty and reserve forces to align reserve units to regional commands to better meet their needs. As we know, NORTHCOM is in charge of what? Military civil support, civil unrest. So assigning these reserve units to NORTHCOM under these regional assignments would provide it with resources to deploy forces if it may need. Of course, this is Operation Garden Plot, right? Department of Defense Civil Disturbance Plan. Part of the plot warns against racial unrest, which is what they're trying to do right now, anti-war elements. City buses in Baltimore will begin recording conversations of bus drivers and passengers this week. It says they're aimed at helping investigate crimes, accidents, and poor customer service. It says here it will be locked by a black box that can store up to 30 days of audio. In Spain, they're proposing a law prohibiting recording and capturing of local pigs in action. Chicagoland police hit with torture and forced confession lawsuits. They must be learning this from the agency, which trains NYPD to do the same thing. Caution, red alert, large terrorist cow at large. That's right. The Daily Mail covered a militarized police SWAT team chasing a cow that went AWOL. The animal was shot dead after the... SWAT team said that they were concerned for the public safety. Uh, some actually say that the cow illegally flatulated methane. So United Nations calls for anti-terror internet surveillance bill. Talking about internationally agreed framework. It would help fight and prosecute the terrorists. Now some say patents for genetically engineered chimps is perverse. Well, what about handmade humans to save the planet? What about genetically modified super soldiers? You got robots doing heart surgery, robots replacing nurses, pills that tell people to take their pills. 
This is GGN. Thank you.